Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a typical American neighborhood. And as you can see, we are about a week out from Halloween. And there is not a decoration in sight. It's a barren wasteland of Halloween. This shouldn't be. Why is this the case in America? Listen, guys, back in my day, when I was a kid, Halloween looked like this. What's going on everybody? This is Cut to the Chase. And if you're like me, you may be asking yourself, why does Halloween feel so, I don't know, different than it used to? Especially in these last years. I know we're just coming off a pandemic and shoot, inflation's at an all time high and everybody's broke. But Halloween is a billion dollar industry. So, why are there dead neighborhoods that don't do anything and then you have a guy like this who puts everything and anything out on his front lawn and it looks awesome. I have a couple theories that we're going to go over. Maybe it's the 2024 election season and people are just kind of stressed out about it. Or maybe people just don't really want to celebrate anymore and they just want to shut in and watch their Netflix. We're going to dive into all that and see where this road takes us. So before we dive deeper into this topic, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning into this. I know this is a, a little break away from what I normally post, but this is something I, I'm passionate about and I just kind of wanted to make a video on it and see how it does and see what you guys think about it too. And if you guys like it, you know, maybe I'll do some more of these kinds of videos where it's a little more off topic of what I might normally post. But if you are enjoying it so far, please hit that subscribe button and support the channel. <laughs> So I want to dive in first with the numbers part. So that way we can get a gauge as to where all the money is going because this is a billion dollar industry. 2023 alone, this is coming from Investopedia, was a record setting year for Halloween. I think it was uh, $12.2 billion were spent on Halloween. That's huge. It's not as much as Christmas, but it's, it's I think it's the second biggest. And we see there's 4.1 billion spent on costumes, 3.6 billion spent on candy, 3.9 billion spent on decorations, and then a half a billion spent on greeting cards. So almost $4 billion were spent on decorations. And you saw in the intro, that neighborhood was just dead. Where are all the decorations? I want answers to this. So this year it's expected to hit $11.6 billion. And that is 3.8 billion costumes, 3.5 billion candy, 3.8 billion in decorations. Is not, that one doesn't, there's not much change. Again, if we're spending 4 billion a year on decorations, why are the streets look, why do they look like dead zones? Hmm? Can you answer me that? Can you answer me why they look like dead zones? <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna lie. I've had this theory floating around in my head for a while now that trunk or treats are destroying Halloween trick or treating. And when I started doing research for this, I started running into my theory. I kind of always just had it on my own and then I, it started to be validated when I, I was, I was uh, going through some TikToks from Halloween of last year and a lot of people were saying the same thing. They were blaming it on these trunk or treats. But I didn't see anybody in the block. And when I went out to grab food, there wasn't anybody in sight. No family, no kids, nothing. And I'm like, huh, trick or treating started like an hour ago. And me and my brother are looking through neighborhood after neighborhood to see that there are no kids in sight, not even decorations. And then there was someone in the comments saying that once trick or treating became a thing, no one started trick or treating anymore. Is it just me or does Halloween just suck now? Like I have all this candy. It's already an hour into trick or treating and there's no kids. Your kids are missing out on what you used to do as a child. Stop trunk or treating because that's not what Halloween is about. 
Now I want to preface, I don't necessarily hate trunk or treats. I just hate that parents are starting to use it for their own advantage to just be lazy. Check out this guy. We're just in a field right here. There's not, uh, you're not going door to door. You're not walking around your whole neighborhood. Honestly, for the parent, it's a little easier because you can see we're just standing here as opposed to running around the neighborhood. Okay, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Trunk or treats have a place when it comes to like a church party or maybe like a little neighborhood thing. It should not ever be used as a replacement for trick or treating. And I really feel like that's what's happening. And especially when you go to a trunk or treat, it is so sad. It's so sad, darling, it's so sad. I mean, just think about the idea of a trunk or treat. People just kind of sit in a parking lot, they pop the back ends of their car, they sit down, literally almost nobody is dressed up. You might see some people that put some lights on their cars and then a lot of the kids aren't even dressed up and it's just like they just go from car to car picking up candy and, and, and it takes you about five minutes and then what do you do? You, you just go back around again? I don't think trick-or-treating gets worse than that. Oh, but I speak too soon. Okay. An early start to Halloween at Central Chevrolet in West Springfield. Trick-or-treaters bringing their sweet tooth and local businesses providing the candy. Ed O'Grady, the general manager of Central Chevrolet, hosting the second annual Trunk or Treat and directing traffic, all to make sure the community can celebrate safely. Usually trick-or-treating is at night and, you know, could, could keep some people inside. So hopefully having something in the community where it's safe and, and kids can just come and have a good time. It pains me to even think think that there are kids in this video that are going to be my age one day and they're going to think about Halloween when they were a kid and how cool it was to go to what was that Chevrolet some Chevrolet used car dealership <laughs> Halloween. Oh my God. Those are not memories. Those are not memories that should be made. Okay. Like I said, I get the sentiment, but we should not be relying on used car salesmen to bring in the spirit of Halloween. More than the economy, more than illegal immigration, more than anything else combined. This, this is evidence. Our country is in pain. Okay. When you are bringing your family to a used car dealership to celebrate Halloween. Oh, but like I said, trunk or treating is getting out of hand. Now I will say, I think COVID was probably a big reason why trunk or treating really started to take off because you know, it's kind of a smaller venue, it, all that, all that BS. Y'all know how I feel about that whole thing. So maybe on some level, we're still recovering from that. <laughs> so there's a subreddit dedicated to Halloween where I was finding a lot of different uh, anecdotal stories about Halloween and all that. And there was an interesting point that somebody had brought up of neighborhoods that kind of go in waves which I can really see where he was coming from with this, where there's kind of this group of kids that kind of come into the neighborhood, they grow up, then the parents kind of stay there, and then, you know, the parents go their own way. <laughs> and then um, new parents or younger couples will come in, and then, you know, there'll be that that second wave of kids that kind of come through. And so you get these neighborhoods that get full of kids. There's there's people singing outside. We have signs outside that say, make noise to wake the dead. And stuff in our, our graveyard goes off. <laughs> I 
I think they're done. They are just having, I don't know, it's a group of teenagers and they're just recording, they're tech, doing TikToks in front of our setup. So I'm just like letting them have fun. Like. Uh, that makes sense with the whole singing and stuff. What they don't realize is them trying to film content for their social media. It's affecting me trying to film content for my social media. <laughs> Jose, where even was I? I? I don't even remember. Young people can't buy homes. Okay, I yeah, I'm set. All right. He, yeah, so this is what's going on. We've hit a point, especially with the millennial generation, where millennials are having a hard time buying homes, especially right now. Okay, I'm not going to get into this because this, this isn't what this video is about, but <laughs> the average home price in the last four years has, has just risen astronomically. And it, where it's, it's pricing out a lot of people from being able to buy homes, not to mention housing shortages and millennials that have taken on a lot of student debt, as well as Gen Z is now kind of following into that. So there's a lot of factors that go into play on that, which means you're not getting young people to get into homes to start building a family which would then, in a couple years, start leading trick-or-treaters out into the neighborhood. However, just because you have kids in your neighborhood doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stay in your neighborhood when Halloween trick-or-treating time comes. <laughs> So there's this one woman I came across on TikTok that I thought made a really interesting point. Jose, roll film on her video. Kids don't trick or treat in their own neighborhood. They leave, they go to fancy neighborhoods or an event. Now we know for next year because I live in a regular neighborhood and we got one trick or treater. And usually when I drive into this neighborhood, there's kids everywhere. You have to go really slow. They're on their bikes, they're playing basketball. This is a kid heavy neighborhood. I know these kids went trick or treating, but they did not go here. And we have cul-de-sacs. We have a lot of houses with decorations. It used to be an event about neighborhood, about community. You're getting to know the people next to you. You're seeing the kids each year grow up and you're like, oh, last year you were this outfit and this year you're this one. And now everyone gets in their cars. They go to a gated neighborhood with extreme decorations and full size candy bars and they make it an outing with their friends and family. There's not really pandemic vibes anymore. So it was like a full send Halloween vibe. Let's have trick or treaters. Let's decorate and wah, wah. So let's recap. What she's saying is there are kids in this neighborhood that she sees throughout the year that they're there. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood. She's in a normal neighborhood, like a regular middle class neighborhood. Nothing wrong with it. Not poor. It's just fine, but come Halloween night, there's no kids. And the reason is because they're piling all the kids into the car and they're taking them to the rich neighborhoods, which really sucks for all the people that are in these normal neighborhoods. And so I have a feeling that a lot of these people that we see in these videos where it's like, no kids came to my house or like, I only got three kids in three hours or whatever. I think they probably would have more kids that trick or treat if those kids were staying in those neighborhoods. And so what does this do? Well, if you got literally no kids the year before, you're probably less likely to even hand out candy. So might as well turn off your porch light and watch a scary movie for the night. And I see this in my own experience because I'll hear people talk about that are in these rich neighborhoods or these neighborhoods that are really, really decorated. thousand trick-or-treaters there's no way you're getting a thousand trick-or-treaters there's no way a thousand trick-or-treaters are in your neighborhood it's because they all got bust in and i know several people that do this and i think this also is a big cause as to why there just seems to be this deadness around halloween now is because the more and more this happens like oh let's just take all the kids to these neighborhoods you're basically killing all the surrounding things where people are actually trying to celebrate. There's no kids coming. It's okay. I'll have a candy. What are you doing, baby? 
They're waiting at their door. The freaking dogs are waiting at the door, ready to hand out candy, and nobody's coming. And so that's going to make them less likely to do it the next year. Because nobody wants to just sit at home alone eating a bag of candy. It's a lonely feeling. Jose, play that one video where it's the, uh, it's the woman, it's like her first Halloween or whatever. Hello! Happy Halloween! Some candy! We got our first trick-or-treater! <laughs> Misu, get up the table. Do you think you're going to treat her Halloween? Happy Halloween, right? Okay. Happy Halloween! Is that what you say? <laughs> Wait. Baby, it's it's been an hour. Are our porch lights on? I think they are, babe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Only one? <laughs> I'm sorry, Misu. You okay? Yeah, we just don't have any more trick or treaters, so we're just eating the candy. <laughs> it honestly breaks my heart to see that. I feel her pain. So if you want to help keep the Halloween spirit alive, do your best to trick or treat in your own neighborhood. Then afterwards, if you're really wanting to go to like the, the rich neighborhood to get the cool candy bars or whatever, then go do that. But spend some time in your own community. <laughs> So this one, I'm guilty of, okay? There, there, there's that one house on the street that goes completely nuts, all right? <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I, 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 I... We're in an apartment complex and, and we, we do that. We go nuts on it. And I will say we do it because we like it. We do it because we want to. And honestly, it brings a lot of joy to the community as you, can, as you heard earlier, okay? And we do it for the community because there's not a lot of people who decorate. And so we have people that tell us, hey, thank you so much for decorating. You know, we walk by it every night, we enjoy it, it's really fun, uh, the kids love it, and it's really great to hear, and honestly, it helps you want to do it more often. However, I can see how people might ride the coattails of people who really go all out, because I've seen several instances where there's these vacant or just dead streets, and then there's one house that is just absolutely just filled to the brim with all sorts of Halloween stuff. And I can just feel the thought process of, eh, he, he's decorating for all of us, basically. He represents our neighborhood. And that's just not the case because here's the thing. I know there's this kind of unwritten rule that if the porch light is on, then that means uh, that person is still ready to give out Halloween candy. But I, when I was a kid, I don't, I don't think I really remember doing that. I, I know that was something we would look for, but if somebody was just like not decorated, we tended to just not really go to that house because we kind of figured, oh, okay, you know, they probably aren't decorating and they're probably not wanting to be disturbed. And so we might just pass over it unless we saw some other kids that went up there and we saw that, oh, okay, yeah, they are giving out candy. And I think there's a lot more people who think the way I do because I came across this video. And how depressing that must be anyway when you're a kid and you, you're going down a street and it looks like literally any other night. <laughs> And this brings me to the final point of this video, which is 
The magic of Halloween belongs to us. It's on us to make Halloween memorable. It's on us to make Halloween have that, that spirit that we had when we were a kid, which this means stop watching Netflix and go buy a pumpkin, carve it, and set it out on Halloween night. Or go buy some orange lights and put them in a bush. Or buy a blow up and throw it out in your yard. The point is just do something that adds some value to the experience. Because the reality is Halloween is different from say Christmas. Christmas is very much family centered and focused. Whereas Halloween is much more about the community and being with friends. I don't know, maybe that's why Halloween just isn't the same anymore because people just aren't making friends anymore because it's all online or something. And most importantly, if you're involved in any way of with trick or treating, I strongly recommend stay in your own neighborhoods. It's okay to go to the cool neighborhoods like later in the night, but I, I highly recommend stay in your own neighborhoods. I guarantee you we see these videos. There's people that are waiting to give out candy. They're there. <laughs> if everybody just kind of stayed in their own neighborhood. I believe we seriously can make Halloween great again. And if it is great for you, that's awesome. Maybe throw some ideas down in the comments about what you do in order to make Halloween great for the community. And I'd love to know more about what you guys think about Halloween and how maybe it's changed from when you were a kid, like some things that you wish were still relevant or that you saw today that you just don't see anymore. Put that down in the comments. I'd love to go through and see what memories are sparked for me from that. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a safe and fun Halloween. If you like this video, please go down and like it. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. And again, happy Halloween, guys.